Okay, hi everybody. Um, as Todd said, I'm going to be showing you some castle building pieces. Um, you guys will all be fairly familiar with this setup. This is the uh, rank three keep that you've seen in Siege Perilous and the Hunger Dome. Um, right here, I've got all of the pieces and components broken out. So you can see exactly the number of pieces you need of uh, each type that you can build this rank three keep with. So we've got um, a main gate here and three side gates. You've got some corner pieces, you've got some T-junctions, you've got a few arches, some straights, um, some pieces with archer uh, towers on them. And then you've also got these corner piece towers right here that have platforms to put ballistas on. Oh, they're telling me to speak up and say who I am. I'm Melissa. I'm the art director here on Crowfall, and I'm going to talk a little bit louder. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, Blair, okay? Don't be nervous. They love you. All right, so that's the rank three. All right, let's jump over to, let me show you. I've got also the rank two. So you can see this guy has got um, only two ballista towers uh, and then the rest of them are just normal corner pieces um, so it's a little bit smaller and then let's see the rank one and here's the rank one so it's got a simple gate so you'll also notice um, you still have the archer towers on a few of the pieces but you don't have them on all of them so you have you progressively um, across the ranks will get newer and cooler pieces that you didn't get in previous so like this one you'll see this got this really cool like little buttress detail that comes off of the um, the archer tower where well, you don't get those in the uh, rank two you get the archer towers um, <clears throat> And so they progressively get a lot of a little bit more interesting. So here, I'm going to show you something I've built. I've built this transept design, sort of inspired by um, medieval uh, cathedrals and churches. They would oftentimes have uh, designs sort of built in a cross or a T pattern. Um, it's a little bit different. I've got sort of two crosses here. Um, but what I did was essentially as if I had um, purchased all of the three ranks. So I, this is a rank one, rank two, and rank three set of pieces um, to build this guy. Um, so you're gonna need a really, really large parcel to put this down. Um, this is about the size of, let's see, the rank three keep that you're seeing in Siege Perilous fits about this footprint right now. So in total area, it's about the size of three of those. So this is, this is closer to the size of maybe a castle or a citadel in terms of the number of pieces um, and the complexity and the scale overall. So what I also want to go over with you guys is maybe show you, so here's a new scene I have open that shows you all of the pieces. This is the rank three set of pieces, the rank two set of pieces, um, and the rank one. So now you can see uh, them all together and I wanna rebuild that transept design for you um, as much as I have time for and show you maybe some tips on how you might approach something like this of this scale and with these pieces. Cause you can see, like I said, you've got they vary across your sets. And so you want to plan it out. Let me jump back to the original design. When I built this originally, I started laying out my main sort of components. Like I started with the gates. I knew I wanted gates on the front and the back. And I have this design in mind for this um, transept design. So I put gates on the sides as well. Um, so I started with my gates and I just kind of loosely laid them out. I wanted this to be the front entrance, and so I wanted this one to also to be the most fortified. So I put the pieces that have the uh, little buttress uh, sharp points on it out front, and I wanted to put the majority of my ballista corners out front as well. So afterwards, I realized I only had um, four and two, so I had two more. So I put a couple on the back side uh, as well, but I don't have any for the side. So I tried. I had to focus on where I wanted the... Uh, uh, the majority of my uh, protection to come from. So let me just start kind of rebuilding this thing. So what I did, so here's my guy that has the the front gate. And you guys are going to have a cool fancy tool 
that will allow you to build these things a little bit more easily than I'm doing here. I'm just snapping to the grid, but I'm in Maya right now. You're not quite about scale. So scale? How big are these things? You know? How big just are the... Tell scale. Oh, are the individual pieces? Well, just in general, yeah. How, how, yeah do, do, zooming down to a gate, how big is that? All right. Um, so our smallest piece, to give you a, a sense, is about... Whoops, hold on. There you go. You can see the grid right here. These are four meter squares, so this is an eight meter wide. That's our smallest unit uh, in the wall pieces right now. And I believe these are about 15 to 20 meters tall. So these walls are, are um, tall but short enough so that if you're standing up here and shooting down at a, an opponent, you can still hit them. Um, but you have to be, they have to be fairly close to the wall, which is why you want a cool ballista because that'll allow you to get a little bit more range. Um, and that's why we built these also, these little ranger um, balconies. I don't really know what to call them. I don't really think they existed in reality. Um, usually this is this would have been just sort of a buttress sort of support piece um, architecturally. We built it a little bit more for function. In reality, as an archer, you're not going to like come out on a balcony and just start shooting people because you'd be way too exposed. But this is a game, and we wanted to give players the opportunity to uh, be successful. Um, so let me pull a tower over. So this is actually easier in top down. So let me go back over to top down. Nelson, can you take some questions? Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Can we build freestanding walls? If I want to fence off the wildlings in the north, how long can it be? Yes, you can build whatever you want. We don't really have any limit, to, uh, provided that you have enough buildable space. So there will be designated buildable areas in your parcels. Um, and so you'll have to consider that. Um, but we have no real limitations or restrictions on the type of pieces that you use or where you use them. Some of these are actually built with the intention of being exterior wall pieces, like these gates, for instance. But there's no reason why you can't build an interior bailey. Is that right? Bailey. <laughs> that has a gate. <laughs> uh, you know, on the interior. Um, there's no reason why you can't use interior walls on an exterior. Let's see, I think up here, for instance, I have some cool archways that we've sort of expected and designed to go into sort of as an interior wall, but there's no reason why you couldn't use those as an exterior wall and make like a really cool sort of Roman um, looking structure if you wanted to. Okay, so see these these tiny little details. Just you gotta you gotta pay attention to what you got. So this should really go up here because I want all of my gates up front to have the um, pointy, sharp little buttress pieces. I'm gonna go back and top down because it's a lot easier. See what I'm doing? So did you look at architectural examples of real keeps and castles? Like sure. Talk about some of your inspirations. Yeah. yeah, we do that. We do that all the time. Absolutely. Um, and like I said, this is a game. So, uh, you know, we have to we have to take liberties, you know, where we can. Um, and so historically, we look at um, actual real architecture and structures and their function because you need to have that sort of base for uh, at least to, to start from. And then from there, we sort of make exceptions to the rules if things just don't work out or, you know, sometimes reality is not that fun. Is there a difference in the pieces for like the, the modular pieces for keeps and castles and citadels yeah. or are they all the same? So just like block? I mentioned with the ranks from the rank one, two and three keep, um, that'll also kind of carry into the castles themselves. Um, and the Citadel. So you'll progressively get um, new and cooler pieces that you didn't get in a previous set. So like the castles might come with round towers um, that you won't see here. Um, you might get maybe some angled pieces. So we could do some 45s. Um, we haven't really started playing with that too much yet, but it's absolutely doable. Um, 
I've been a part of building a, a uh, developing a modular system in the past, so I'm sort of familiar with the the things that you kind of need to build something that is functional and that gives you the flexibility to build interesting designs. Um, but then we also need to consider, for instance, that's why you see these gates. We'll you know we'll we'll make variations of these gates of all different kinds. Um, but that's why these gates are so big. Otherwise, it would be very difficult for you guys to build these things and get them as um, custom looking as we could get because we're crashing things in that you couldn't do in a modular system. Um, you'll notice like these have these staircases sort of built into them over here. Um, we're able to get things a lot tighter because um, we don't have to when we build the pieces um, rely on the grid exactly. We just need to make sure that where they sync up actually does fit that grid perfectly. Um, but we will be giving you, as you'll notice over here, we will give you a lot of standalone pieces, like here is a set of staircases that you'll be able to use to crash up against a wall. Um, it just won't fit as, um, it'll fit snug, but it won't, uh, let me see if I can get you a better example. Let me look at this piece. So we are going to be building these wooden ramparts as standalones. Um, but you can see how like we have the wooden beam sort of crashed in here as if it's sort of built into the wall. Well, if this was modular, if we just gave this piece to you by itself, you wouldn't be able to go past the lines of the grid. So you wouldn't be able to get this look. We will give you standalone pieces that you will be able to come uh, to sync up and come off of this. But like the support beam that's underneath it will be, have to be centered. Um, so we are giving you a variety of pieces that have some custom detailing to them, um, but then giving you uh, a lot of individual uh, pieces in order to give you the variety and the ability to get granular with your own designs if you want to. Will people be able to combine their stronghold pieces to build a big building? Um, so different groups of people combining together? Yes. I believe so. That is a better uh, Todd and Blair question, but I do believe that is uh, part of the plans for sure. Will we be able to stack the pieces? <laughs> so that's another challenge. Right now we are um, sticking to the trying to concentrate and do this at the same time. Sorry. No, it's all right. Um, right now we're sticking to the uh, one plane at the moment. In the future, you may be able to stack. Right now, we haven't gotten that far. So what I'm doing is basically starting kind of like you would maybe a puzzle where you start sort of with the, the corners and the, uh, the boundaries, essentially. Like, where, what are your key components? Like, you don't want to commit too early to just start building from one side and working your way and then realizing you run out of buildable space um, because that's going to be dif difficult to change and then modify later. So a good idea is to sort of st start with a rough. Things don't have to be exactly aligned. Um, this makes it easier to modify from. So from this point, um, I have all of my major pieces laid out, and I've started to put my ballista towers. So I want all of my pieces that have these really cool little pointy buttresses to keep the catapults away from my walls as much as possible. I'm going to keep those up front. It's tricky. So you've got and so. And like I said, this is not even close to the number of pieces we'll eventually need. As I was building this, um, go back to the built one. As I was building this, I thought, you know, what we really need is some T, not just T junctions, which is what these pieces are right here. What we really need are some plus pieces as well, because <clears throat> that would be pretty awesome to be able to create interior walls, kind of like I've done here. I took this T piece and rotated it in such a way so that I had an interior section where I could put a wall segment and create some interior walls to funnel um, players through and or it just looks awesome to do it like this. So we, we definitely have a lot more to build. Um, and as we start playing with these more and we get designers and, and the team playing, we'll uh, realize um, 
how many more things we're going to need. So let's see. This guy. Melissa, will we have moats? <laughs> oh, well, yes. We can totally have moats. I mean, what's a castle without a moat, right? Am I right? All of these designs seem rather angular. Is there any way to build a more rounded castle? So, like I said before, we are going to have, we're gonna build pieces that are, are on a 45. And so you will, to some degree, be able to build uh, with the 45 degree angles, you'll be able to start building pieces that do kind of, you know, simulate sort of a round on a larger scale. Um, in terms of actually building round pieces, we could, pro we could, I mean, it would essentially work the same way as an angled 45 degree piece. It would have to be built on a larger footprint, so it'll take up more space. So that's kind of an, we could do that. It's more of an aesthetic choice for you guys because it will take up more grid space. Um, but that's something we can definitely play with if there's interest in actual real rounded pieces versus just 45. But the 45 uh, is definitely in the plans. And like I said, you guys are going to have a, a tool that will allow you to do this. Well, I already jacked that up. That's because it's the wrong piece. I'm just going to delete it. Here you go. That's what I was looking for. So now I'm just actually starting to build. I feel pretty good about sort of the overall layout. It fits within my buildable area. I've got my gates where I want them. And so now I'm just building in between. This is actually a little bit smaller than... Um, my previous design. This front area is a little bit shorter. I actually used two pieces there before as opposed to just one. Actually, I think I will go ahead and just make it a little bit smaller because that last one is pretty enormous. Um, you're going to have to have a very large parcel to be able to build that. So if you're a creative person, um, I think this is going to be a lot of fun for you um, because it allows you to just come up with whatever cool design you want. Um, these kits will actually come with a suggested, uh, so like the keep, the rank three keep. You'll know at least that with those pieces you can build that rank three keep. But if you wanted to build something else, you're totally welcome to do that. Um, so if you don't care about the building, if it's not interesting to you, you've got something there that you know that works, that's been tested, those are the things you're going to come across in the game. Um, so you know that they're, they're battle tested and you know how to, to work with them. But if you're creative and you want to come up with something unique and different, this is your way of kind of making your own mark in the world. And you can craft them. And you can craft them which is awesome. You can buy them, you can craft them, you can trade them, these actual pieces. You can have somebody who is a crafter um, come and actually build some uh, custom pieces for you. Let's say like I, I had my keep already built. Um, I liked the layout, but I really want to make now these into pieces that support ballistas. Um, if you're a crafter, you could do that yourself, or you could have a crafter come over and turn those into ballista pieces, and you don't have to change the layout or the design, you can just replace them right there. So 
So one of the things I had to keep in mind early on right now, like I'm just building from a blueprint that I've already built, but you'll notice I have a given number of T pieces, a given num or a corner pieces to towers, a given number of T pieces, um, and that that have different variations. And so you've got to take stock of what you have early on to be able to get a consistent, if you want kind of a symmetrical build. Like I only have a given number of these, let me go to this perspective view, of these archways for instance. So you'll notice on this larger design, I wasn't able to get a consistent three-way arch all the way across because I only had a, um, a few to work with. So I focus the three on the front entrance. I have a middle sort of um, funnel point and then the back entrance only has has the two so it's a lot of just playing around seeing what fits um, but the key point I think is is starting with your basic boundaries first um, and isolating the most important pieces that you want where and then just kind of working in from there um, I don't know how much time I have because I want to show you some other things okay That needs to go in the center. So one thing we also discovered is all of these kits, these single one by pieces right here, the smallest unit, we only have the pieces that have this crenellation on it. So we'll probably make, we'll need to make pieces that don't have them. Um, like I said, we've got a lot more to build, but we just wanted to show you sort of what's been in development, our progress we've made so far, and talk about where we're kind of going with this. You also want to consider when you're laying this out what you want to put inside, and that's something that I'll show you here in a minute. Um, we're going to have a variety of different buildings and shops and taverns and props and all kinds of things you'll be able to um, set decorate uh, on the interior of these things. Let's see. Go back to top down. Okay. Well, I think you guys get the idea here. So let me jump really quick to then some other things I want to show you. We've got some concept here of some of the buildings that I was talking about. So this is a tavern. Um, I think this was our rank two tavern. We've got the concept of ranks like we do with the modular pieces as well. Okay. Um, so this is where you might go to buy food or uh, other items. And then you can put these inside your fortified walls and protect them. You can slot an NPC in there. You'll be able to sell your wares and goods to other people. Here is a rank one little potion shop. And as they get bigger and bigger, they will have, they'll have crafting stations um, as part of them that you'll be able to go up and interact with. Uh, again, you'll be able to slot in an NPC in every single one of these and sell your wares to other players. Here's a forge, um, a rank one forge. We've also got some items that will show up in the store really soon, as well as these buildings. This is a, a actual functional weapon rack. You'll be able to display your swords and bows and whatever else you've crafted or have uh, in your house. So Melissa, I have a question for yeah. you about those buildings that you were just showing, like the tavern and the blacksmith shop. Mm -hmm. Are those just aesthetic or will people actually be able to go into them and interact inside of them? So early on, we actually were going to let you go inside um, of all of the buildings. If you played the Hunger Dome, <clears throat> 
you know, notice the small house, you could go inside of it. We ran into a lot of camera clipping issues because we have to cater to a variety of sizes. And so our smallest house ended up being just enormous. So I think what we're going with is you actually won't go inside some of these smaller houses that our smallest house that you can go inside will probably be like a great hall that you might find in the fort and the keep. Um, just because that just makes it so much better for of an experience for you guys. I mean, really, there's no other reason to go in other than to uh, interact with the um, the NPC and buy and sell goods. Um, so this gives us more flexibility to make the buildings of a scale that fits better in our world and look really cool without having to worry about cameras clipping everywhere for some of the larger characters. Okay, one more question. Sure. Uh, when players build in game. Will they have access to an RTS view, or will it be done character view? Will building take time, or will it be instant placement? Um, that's something we still need to work out. We've had discussions. Um, it's from this perspective, uh, for building walls that are this large, or building um, layouts that are this large, it is probably easier to do it from a uh, perspective that's outside of the world, it becomes really sort of hard to tell how you're placing things in a, when you're running around at player scale, because your player is about, you know, that big. Um, so it's just challenging to get it lined up as well. You can't really tell if you're on the grid or not. So more than likely for these larger layouts, we'll, we'll give you a tool that allows you to see it from a more uh, advantageous perspective. Whereas if you're placing something like this, that might be more of an in-world placement because you'll need to be you know, in the world to actually see these are a lot smaller. It'll be easier to place these when you're standing around. So these are some of the items that'll show up on the store um, pretty soon. So uh, basically big, big siege tents, um, objects that you can place around to sort of build a, a, a siege camp if you want to. You'll be able to put your guild's crest on some of these. This is a guild tent. You'll be able to change the logo for your guild or faction. This is where your guys might eat dinner after a battle. Another little guild table that you can place around. And another guild banner that you'll be able to place your um, guild crest on. Anyways, this is just a small sample of the props that are going to be coming that you can decorate your world with. We wanted to focus on the things that you could put outside to build more of a siege um, camp first, and then we'll start moving into things that you'll be able to decorate uh, like the interiors of your great halls with. So I think I'm about out of time if there are no more questions. All right. Thanks, you guys. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at our modular um, construction.